How's you know taking care of your body, taking care of the team, and making sure they, that, that they stay ready but not get overworked? Yeah, I think the, the small scientists are going to really earn their money over the coming months now when we have back-to-back -back games midweek and, and at the weekend. And I think it's important that we, we're clever with it and we don't dilute the quality. Um, training today was incredible. Really, really good session. Um, and it's just about then how we recover for the next day. So it's about you know doing all the right things and being a proper professional, which is you know why the boys are here. Um, so you're absolutely right. We have to get that spot on. How do you determine to differentiate you know a good day versus a bad day I, I mean, see that but I mean you have different things that you want to work on right so how do you how do you how do you do that with with a plan in mind knowing we're in this for the long haul and there's certain things that I don't want to get them on get on them on so yeah so I think outside the obvious technical and tactical stuff which you're referring to we have to physically load the players so we know where we're trying to hit in terms of the distance covered, in terms of how much sprinting they're doing. But also, I think the psychological side of how much confidence they're getting from the practices is really important as well, especially at this point in the season. We've got the first eight games out of the way, so we kind of know where we are. We've played every team but one. So now it's about building their confidence within different systems. And it's about you know helping them, like we said in the, you know, in the first part, helping them physically. So we're trying to tick a lot of boxes within the sessions, and that comes through really careful planning. And I saw at the end there you're doing some stuff individually, the personal development. Um, obviously, that's something where, where each player can probably say, hey, this is what I need to work on and so forth. And then you make it creative, you make it you know competitive and, yeah. and all that stuff. How's that been working out? Yeah, no, really good. Uh, every, every boy has got a, an individual development plan and a pathway that we're following. But there's nothing wrong with making it fun. So I had the midfielders there playing tic-tac-toe finishing. So in England we call that noughts and crosses, but you know they, they love it. It's competitive. There's no physical load. They're standing still. Steady's working with the forwards at the other end, and then we've got Joe Lucas working with the wide players at the fullback. So everyone's getting their ingredients ready for for the big night on Saturday. How did that come to be? How did the individual development plan come to be? Because that's not something you see with every team. So where did you find that idea, or did you put that up in your brain, and how the players received it? Uh, it's a combination of two things. I think um, coming up as a young coach, I've always been about the person first and then talk about the player and then the team comes after that. And then I think the second thing, a couple of people, you know, really influential people that I met at West Ham Academy, Terry Wesley and Liam Manning, two guys that, you know, really, really influenced my, my planning around the individual stuff. Um, I remember when I, when I interviewed there and I said something about individual development and Terry's eyes lit up. So West Ham is, you know, is a club and an academy that I would really credit with, with my, my foresight on that. And then how have the players responded to it? Do you see that that's something that they've been itching to get and maybe hadn't had other places? I think I'll ask you a question. How would you feel if your boss at work said, I'm going to give you something that makes you a better professional? How would you feel? I feel pretty good. There you go. That's how <laughs> the boys feel about it. So, you know, it's positive. As long as they're coming in and they know that, you know, we're not coming in just going through the motions and it's about coming in to improve them every day. They also feel that they're getting better. They're able to do things that they wasn't able to do on game one that they're doing on game eight. And when we get to game 20 and 25, they'll be, you know, they'll be better than they are now. So I think that investment from us to them is a really important part of that play. What does it mean to you that that's not something that they get at every club, that it is something that makes them feel good to have that individual I mean, I can't comment on what goes on at other clubs. I can just, you know, I can only reference my journey and what I've been through. Um, and I'm sure other clubs are doing brilliant things as well. But for us, it's just about concentrating on, you know, every lad that we sign and, and, and the owner, you know, they're paying them to be full-time professionals for half an athletic. So we've got to maximise them every week and they feel that as well, which is great. And, and it's also something where they can go out there when it's time to Sure. And they don't have to worry. They've already covered everything that they know that they need to work on, and they can just go play. 100%. And the, the fact that we have a plan, and they have a PDF, and they have an electronic PDF, they can come out before the session and work on things as well, which is personal to them. It's not just about me as their coach saying, these are the three things you need to develop. It's about them as well, discussing that with us and saying, I'd like to get better at this. And it's all the view to go into the next level, and it has to be that. It has to be. It can't be, we're going to make you a really good USL player. It's got to be, right, do you want to get to the MLS? Do you want to go to Europe? How are we going to get you there? 
So it's it's about planning. So the boys have, like you say, they've got that reference that they can come out here before we start and practice some things. You see, Fon's doing his finishing. Connor's always out here doing his short passing. Danny's on his free kicks. So the investment is, is clear to see. Preston talked about what he wants, how much his time on the bench is just as important as his time in the game. Um, what do you want him to see? You smiled when I said that. So first, does that make you happy to hear that? Listen, listen I, said to, I said to the guys at the weekend, the guys didn't start. You know, we call you what we call you for a reason. You have your name, the game changes for a reason. And in no other sport, in my opinion, do you have the luxury of sitting there, analyzing your opponent, whilst watching your opponent getting tired for you to then come on and play against them. So I said to the boys, imagine a boxer boxing for 10 rounds and then stepping out and a fresh guy coming in for the last two rounds. And that's what it's like with Preston. So he's, you know, he's been so influential off the bench and he'll get his rewards because he's a great kid. But his attitude at the weekend, he led one of the team talks and he was on the bench. That shows you the character of the lad as well. So I'm very proud of him for saying that. I know we, I haven't talked to you about it, but then you might have him already. But JC, you'll miss him for a while. Yeah. You want him to do well, yeah. right? So what, what's that for, for this club? I mean, yeah, it's brilliant. I, I just gave him a big cuddle and I just said, go and make your family proud and go and make our family proud. And listen, he, he's quality. He's a quality player. We, we are trying to develop the boys to get to the levels of the Olympics and things like that. So we'll be watching him. We're really proud. I just want him to go and enjoy it because he's going to be able to say he's played in the Olympic Games, which is enough amazing achievement so really proud of him he'll go and do his thing there's been no advice what to do on the pitch i never got in that penalty area as a, as a player i was always on the halfway line so there's no advice there it's just go and enjoy yourself and then really about uh, the what was that conversation when he came to you looking for position why did you close the deciding factor to recruit him um since this is his first coaching gig off the field yeah i think outside of the obvious thing of him being you know, a top player in the premier league I think when you speak to Steady yourself, like he's a top person, top, top person. His dedication is second to none. He comes in 7 a.m. in the morning, doesn't leave till 7 p.m. every day. And that's really hard to come by with an ex-pro, ex-professional footballer. They're normally in at 9 a.m. and they're done by 1 p.m. So his work ethic, his attitude, his willingness to learn are all things that sort of, you know, led me towards, let's get him in because he's the sort of person that I, I need around to improve my stuff. And then what are your hopes for the program now that you Oh, it'll get better. It, it already has got better. Yeah, he'll improve it. He, he'll be able to, you know, talk to the players about what it feels like, you know, playing against Man United at Old Trafford under a certain, you know, under a certain amount of pressure. I can't give the players that. I can give them some different things. So I think we, we bounce off each other really well. But like I say, the resounding effect that he's had on everybody is what a quality guy is, a quality addition to the club.